Innuendo, Book 5 of the Todd Mills Mystery Series. Author, R.D. Zimmerman. Publisher, Scribble Pub Press. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter 22. Carrying the bottle of wine as well as his glass, Jim led Todd through the living room and into the billiard room, which was, of course, a chamber of grand proportions, with the same soaring ceiling, two huge leaded glass windows filled one of the walls, while on the others hung random antelope and deer heads, a six-foot-long rattlesnake skin, and a pair of long horns, all trophies of when men were men, squarely planted in the middle with a brass light fixture hanging low over it, was a Victorian billiard table, a huge thing crafted of carved mahogany. Its surface was covered with a field of rich green felt, and from the six pockets hung woven leather pouches. This was a gentleman's room, a manly man's place to discuss money and hunting and port. And tonight, the mysteries of sexuality? Todd sipped his wine as he leaned against the edge of the billiard table, and then couldn't stop himself from saying, Gee, and here I was hoping your people had contacted me because of my talents and abilities as a journalist, not because of my sexual orientation. Please don't be offended. And for being gay. No, replied Chase, looking at him with an oddly seductive grin. And for my wanting to use you. What the hell did he mean by that? It gave Todd a start. Not only the way Tim Chase said it, but also the way his eyes kept scanning Todd. Uh, was double and tender the second language of this household? Determined not to lose his own ground, Todd said, I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little more specific. What I mean is that I wanted to meet you with and talk to a successful gay person from the Midwest. Everybody and their brother at a studio fiddles with a script, but it's me that has his neck on the line. They're a bunch of West Coast people, and granted, a whole lot of them are homosexual. But it's me who's going to have to convince an audience, not only that I'm gay, but that I'm from here. Oh, so I'm research. In so many words, sure. But why? You're from the Midwest. Did he, Todd, wondered, dare? But I can see your concern, after all, there have been all those nasty little rumors... Haven't there? I mean, isn't everyone curious if you are in fact gay? Oh, aren't you the direct one? And yes, that's been the $64,000 question. Where does Tim Chase put his cock? He said with a laugh. Good God, I'll never live it down. Just like Richard Gill will never live down that apocryphal, pesky rodent story. Yeah, he probably won't. Do you know why they put Princess Di on the cover of so many issues of People magazine? Because those issues always sold millions. And do you know why all the tabloids put Tim Chase and his love life on the cover? Because those issues always sell out. Which leads me to the second reason I wanted to meet with you. For this movie, I'd like ultimately to be interviewed by someone who's gay. I want to meet the doubters head on so that they can see there's no conspiracy of silence. So how the hell was Todd supposed to understand all this? This babble, this elongated non-answer. In a roundabout way, was he saying, nope, he wasn't gay, or was he just successfully evading the question? Tim led Todd to a wooden wall rack, and they chose their weapons. The finest of long, straight cues. At his host's insistence, Todd racked up the balls into a tight triangle and then broke them. Sinking a stripped ball, Tim followed, making a difficult shot into a side pocket, then missing a second one. They played on, alternating turns and sipping Jack Nicholson wine. And it was Todd who, by personality as well as by profession, returned to Rescue Waters, asking, So, what do you want to know about a gay man in the Midwest? Tim completed a shot, sinking a solid in a corner pocket, and replied in a near business-like way. I want to know about your work, how long you've been at the present station, and what kind of stories you usually cover. I want to know what it's like being openly gay at work, and how long you've been out. And I want to know if you're out to your parents, and of course, all about your love life. Well, Todd went through it all, answering each of his questions in detail. 
He started with his college years, telling Chase all about his dear love and dear friend Janice, who also turned out to be queer. He talked about being in the closet, about marrying Karen, then being terrified that viewers would find out and his career would be flushed down the toilet. And he talked about doing tricks on the side, wherever, however he could, get them. And then, Michael and Rollins. They finished one game, started in another, and refilled their glasses. Tim took it in, every facet of Todd's life. You were married, asked Chase as Todd neared the end. Yeah, for a number of years, he hesitated at it. And I've got a kid, uh, a son. No shit, how old? Well, it happened when I was in college, so actually he's in his early 20s now. Wow. Unfortunately, I don't know him very well. It's a long story and something I need to take care of, but... No, thought Todd. I'm not going to toss in the fact that my son has a daughter, which obviously means I'm also a grandfather. Instead, he went on to tell the story of his coming out, which was when Todd realized he had Tim Chase completely hooked. As Todd told the star how he was outed when Michael was murdered, Tim put down his pool cue, picked up his glass of wine, and stared at Todd, his face etched with sympathy and understanding. Oh my God, Tim muttered several times throughout the telling. How horrible it must have been. Hard, but ultimately good. Why was it, Todd wondered, that coming out stories held such universal appeal to gay men? Was it simply the common experience, the same plunging of the soul for the inner truth, a truth of character that straight people were rarely forced to discover? And why did it seem that Tim Chase was now listening to Todd's story, judging it for how it might reflect on his own life? Was he vicariously understanding what it would be like for him to come out? To put everything he had worked for at risk simply so that he could assert his own identity and inner sense of honesty? Or was he simply a truly kind man? Tim Chase was already one of the very biggest stars, the kind like Henry Fonda and Cary Grant, a star who was destined to live on as an icon for generations. Todd, in comparison, was a mere speck. If that... Yet as he talked, Todd couldn't help but feel that they had something in common. No, Todd wasn't particularly intuitive, not by any means, yet he couldn't help but think they were very similar in one regard, that they both held a deep-seated fear of what people thought of them, without any evidence and despite knowing the man. But for a very short while, Todd supposed that Tim Chase had gone into acting not only as a way of escaping himself, but as a way of projecting a larger-than-life image of the person he longed to be, a true hero, a true heterosexual hero. Maybe he was straight, maybe he wasn't. Todd had no answer to that simple question. But he did know that Hollywood was a citadel of homophobia, a place where people feared one thing almost above all others, that a particular truth would kill their careers. The sushi arrived. Vic, the bodyguard, didn't make much of a waiter, but he brought in two styrofoam containers and then silently disappeared. Todd and Tim started in on the food, and then Tim dashed off for another bottle of Nicholson's Best. As Tim poured Todd his third and soon fourth glass of wine, Todd wondered if Chase felt it too, this sense that the two of them could be genuine friends. Or did Chase just naturally exude that aura? Was that part of his star charm, the ability to make everyone feel comfortable around him? Was the magic of his appeal simply based on his ability to make everyone like him? So, what about your love life? Asked Tim, stuffing a tuna roll into his mouth. You mentioned this guy, this cop. Is he your monster wonderful? Todd picked up a California roll, draped it with a piece of pickled ginger, then dipped it in wasabi and soy sauce. As he took a bite, he glanced at the other man who was bent over and focusing on a shot. Could Chase be checking Todd out to see if he was available, or was he really just asking about Todd's life? And how should Todd answer? What the hell was going on here? Rollins and I are pretty involved, his mood increasingly dictated by the wine. Todd decided to leave the door open, and he added, But we've recently run into a major bump. I see. Todd found himself looking at Tim Chase's broad hands, his muscular wrists, and the clean-shaven cheeks. He studied the other man's eyes and eyebrows, his ears, the back of his neck, and then he turned away, reaching for his glass of wine. You're shot, said Chase, as he took a sip, then put down the glass and reached for his pool cue. 
Todd realized. He could ask the one question he loved to ask straight people. If, in fact, Chase was straight. In an attempt to keep the issue on the table, he could pose the fairly non-threatening. Have you ever had a same-sex encounter? Probably 60 or 70 percent of the men Todd had asked had said yes, but how would Chase respond? Instead, Todd backed down. So, do you think you'll have a hard time playing a gay man? No. I mean, why should I? I'm an actor. I played lawyers, I played murderers, and could I defend someone in court? Hell no. Could I kill someone? Absolutely not. This is just a continuation of my work, that's all. Uh, but you don't think you'll have any trouble pulling it off? Somewhere off in this huge house, the phone rang, and it made Todd realize how utterly quiet it had been up to this point. There had been no music, no distant voices, only the slow dance of their conversation and the occasional chattering of pool balls. Staring off into the rest of the house, Tim said, Shit, I wonder who that is. Hardly anyone has this number. When someone picked it up midway through the third ring, he shrugged and said, Oh well. And Todd leaned over, focused on a red striped ball that was hugging the side. If he did it carefully enough, he could just tap it with the white ball and get it to roll slowly to the corner pocket. Squinting, he took careful aim, then took a shot, and moments later the ball slipped into the pocket. Very nice, said Chase. Todd came around, saw that the green striped ball was his only chance. But how the hell was he going to get it in that far corner? With force or a slight tap. Squinting, he bent over, and then he felt hands on his hips. His entire body tensed, his heart flew into a rush of a panic. Slowly enveloping him from behind, Tim Chess said, So what do you think? Can I pull it off? Uh, I... Don't forget, TV boy, this is off the record. And Todd took a deep breath, felt the hands come around his hips and move seductively across his waist. And then he quietly gasped. Maybe. Todd felt the other man's crotch press against his ass and Todd's body rushed with a double shot of fear and desire as powerful as a tall glass of tequila. The pool cube rolled out of his hands, dropped onto the green felt, and he stood motionless as Tim Chase started to dry hump him from behind. Jesus Christ, was this really happening? You've got a nice body. He kissed Todd on the back once, twice, and then slowly moved his hand upward to Todd's chest and said, I think this is how you make love to another man, right? Yeah, I think. I think, uh, yeah, you've, you've got the hang of it. Oh, fuck, was he playing with Todd or really coming on to him? It was one of America's biggest idols. The same star Todd had seen on the huge silver screen. Now writing him from behind with true lust, or... Uh, just let me do the work, cooed Chase into Todd's right ear, like silky magic. Chase's broad hand slid down Todd's stomach over his belt buckle, and then flew briefly across his lusty crotch. Oh my god, what's going on here? This guy's wife was right upstairs. Rollins was probably waiting for him at home, but, but this guy was so sexy, so amazingly gorgeous. And if Rollins had been screwing around, why the hell shouldn't he? They weren't married. There was no dictum that said, no, don't do this. Right? This was the benefit of being gay, of never being bound legally or otherwise to another of... From behind, Chase grabbed onto Todd's left nipple and twisted. The delight shot through him, and he thought, if this is a game, I'm not going to be his toy. And he thrust back with his ass, nudging Chase slightly away, then spun around. Their eyes caught and held, and it scared the crap out of Todd. The next second, they were back together, clutching each other. Todd felt Chase's lips on his neck, felt his tongue drawing a moist line upward to his chin, and Todd was rubbing his hand across that hard stomach, not merely massaging it, but determined to probe beneath the belt to reach the only true thermometer of what was now. A voice from the edge of the room said the reviewers have always said my timing is my best quality i almost think they're right don't you 
As if Todd had been caught stealing a bucket of priceless jewels, he flew back against the pool table. Glancing over, he saw her. Gwen Owens, she was standing in the doorway, leaning against the jam, a wily smile on her face. The same smile, in fact, that he'd seen her sport at the Academy Awards. He turned, looked at Tim Chase, who was grinning back at her. What was this, some kind of dream? Chase wiped his mouth with the back of his right hand and said, Just doing a little rehearsing, sweetheart. Of course you are. After all, we all know what a stickler you are for details. She shrugged, turned, and sauntered off, calling over her shoulder. Oh, and Brian's on the phone. Says there's something wrong with the script. Something that you guys have to work out tonight. So the shooting schedule doesn't get all fucked up tomorrow. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to come right over. Turning to Todd, his mouth pursed in a naughty grin. Tim said, oh, Brother, that's the director. Uh, sorry, but I gotta take this call. I'm afraid it's going to be a while. It always is with Brian. Uh, do you mind letting yourself out? Uh, uh no. The naughty grin blossoming into one of his megawatt smiles, Tim Chase asked. So, what do you think? Can I pull it off? Can I act the role of a gay man? Did I convince you? I did, didn't I? Todd stood there. Was that all this was? Just a game? And before he could reply, Tim Chase turned and trotted out of the billiard room. Had any of this really happened? Todd looked over at the pool table, saw his cue lying there. He glanced at the half-eaten sushi. Yes, he just met with Tim Chase. They'd had wine. And there... Those were their wine glasses, and ducking his head back in, Tim preferred a small, naughty grin. Uh, say, I got a couple of more research questions for you. Uh, why don't you come back tomorrow night, say about 7.30? How's that sound? Wondering what in the hell he meant by that, at first Todd said nothing, just stared at him, and then, hating himself, eagerly replied, Sure! A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold, to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides, and in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew. Reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time being true to their values.